Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the AfricanMusicLaw.com show. So we are here talking about the business of music in Ethiopia. Before we get started, however, let me tell you uh, who we are, what we do, and how to reach us. So who we are, we are a brand, African Music Law, empowering the African artist and the creative industry at large. We are really centered on ensuring that the African artist really knows about the entire music business value chain and is able to navigate it through the different tools that we share here through legal commentary and analysis, bringing in experts uh, from the industry and stakeholders to discuss the issues that are present within the industry. Independent of that, of course, um, we also, I particularly uh, focus in on articles on the website, africamusiclaw.com, where you can go in and see some of the really detailed long form analysis on some of the latest issues that intersect with uh, pop culture, legal issues that intersect with pop culture. Okay, so where can you find us? Africamusiclaw.com. You should see some scrolling on the uh, right in front on your screen that shows you how to sign up for the newsletter and also the exact website to go to. In addition, uh, we are on all streaming platforms. So we used to just exclusively do only the podcast. Last year, we also added the live stream element to it. So right after the live stream, what happens the, is, is the um, live stream is available in podcast format so that you can have a chance to listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and the list goes on all your major streaming platforms where you get your podcast. And then finally, um, we are we have an, an amazing show. I'm really, really super excited about the guests that we have now. One of our guests has been having a little bit of a, a difficulty on the technical side, which is why we're a little bit uh, late in starting. However, we do have our other guests present. So I'm gonna invite her to join me in the stream and we'll get the show started. Now, before we actually do, I'm of the opinion that for the most part, when it comes to the African continent, there's a very, very myopic stand standpoint on how we um, interact with each other, have intertrade with each other, among other things. And when you think about the power of the continent and how huge the continent is, there really is no reason why we're not locking arms and being able to work together so that we are a force to be reckoned with on the global map, whether we're talking entertainment or other industry sectors. In this instance, we're talking entertainment. In this instance, we're talking the music business. So uh, I'm actually quite delighted that we are exploring the business of music in Ethiopia. And I'm inviting my guest, um, Layla Konjo. Before I do, let me tell you just a little bit about Layla. And I do see a message from my guest, the guest trying to uh, figure the technical side out, but we'll get to him in a second. So, all right. So let's talk about Layla. And um, some of you already know Layla because she's been here before. Oh, great. The guest finally got in. Awesome. So I will, um, in. let me actually invite both on. But before I do their bios, Leila Konjo is a booking agent and founder of Leila Entertainment. She has successfully booked some of Africa's global superstars, including David Doe, Shatawale, and Techno for nationwide tours in the U.S. and around the globe. Leila was a performer in her local city's Cirque du Soleil type circus shows in Ethiopia prior to migrating to the U.S. And she has an heritage that's steeped in entrepreneurship and the arts. And then Nagus, um, Aremu is the founder and CEO of Royal Festival, Nagus Way and Nagus Entertainment, and he's produced events in the Caribbean and across the African continent, with his largest event having over 180,000 people in attendance. He's well-versed with music publishing, image rights, merchandising, and is a manufacturer and owner of the exclusive license for the production of Haile Selassie's T-shirts, of which his company, Nagus Way, has manufactured and distributed globally. Nagus has a long history and continues to produce events for one of Ethiopia's most respected music icon, Teddy Afro, uh, a musician that I've followed for quite a while. And um, Nagus also has worked with some of the leading African and Caribbean artists, including David Doe, who's from Nigeria, Stephen Marley, Jamaican, who also happens to be son of Barb Marley. So, so happy to invite both of this guests into the stream. Let's get Leila going. Hi, Leila, how are you? Hello, hi, good morning. Good morning to you. I know uh, it, it is early over there, although uh, it gets quite early here in in, uh, in California as well. And yes. Nagus, welcome, how are you? Welcome, how are you doing? 
I'm great. Oh. So good to have both of you. Y'all were giving me a little <laughs> when we couldn't get when we couldn't get your technical issues sorted out. So I'm so glad everything is sorted out. So Nagos, let's start with you. I know today is you were saying something about a Palm Sunday uh, culturally. Yes, yes. So tell us a little bit about that. What's that about? I had to rush out of the church. Uh, salam, my. Hi. Good uh, morning. Good morning. Uh, I have to rush out of the church because, you know, Sunday service we had uh, today. Next week is uh, Easter. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Uh, uh, so today is a Palm Sunday. I was I was attending a church. Then I, I got you call and uh, uh, I left. So that's why I'm late a little bit. You know, I had to go to. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. We give you three weeks notice, but it's okay though. <laughs> you know, the Sunday services, even you give me three weeks notice, one year notice, Sunday service is Sunday service. Yeah, I understand. You know, like church, Juma church, Friday. Church, church is important. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Juma Friday, it don't change. Like that, how, how, yeah, man. So, yeah, but yeah. You, 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 you're, about, you're about G-O-D. So actually, that's still a good place to start. And, and what I'm going to do, um, 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 Leila, I'll come back to you. I want to explore just a little bit of that background that you have, the religious background, because I will get into your background first and then we'll, we'll talk to Leila about her background before we delve into the business of music. Why is your spirituality, spirituality so important to you the way it is? Uh, it's, 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 uh, I would say uh, because where I come from, uh, Africa, uh, Africa, our, our only resource is our faith. Mm. The only reason you see Africans where we are today is because our faith. So uh, the book say, keep up what your ancestors was doing. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have no choice but uh, to balance spirituality to my, my lifestyle because Africa. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be like this if I was born in Europe. I will all do respect to Europe, you know? So, yeah, so I'm, yeah. I happen to be a woman of faith as well. I go to church on Saturdays. So I'm a seven day Adventist, so you so, go to yeah, church yeah. on Sundays. So, Same but thing. I understand. I understand. So, so when you talk about church and and Africa and and specifically, I'm sure Ethiopia, because across the African continent, there's so many layers of that church, like African traditional religion, for example. Um, so many other types of uh, faiths before, you know, Western civilization came into so-called Western civilization came on the continent and introduced us to Christianity. So are you of the Christian faith or a different faith since you're doing Palm Sunday and your Easter separately? Like what's your specific um, religion? Are, is it, is it are, actually are, Christian? Are, uh, uh, the oldest, uh, the oldest uh, uh, Orthodox, which is African Orthodox, often okay. people say, Often people say Ethiopian Orthodox mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, we shrink. Mm. Uh, when you're spiritually poor, you shrink. When you're spiritually rich, you multiply. So we shrink to to say Ethiopia, but no, I follow a, a, an African Orthodox. It's okay. an uh, ancient, ancient uh, 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 book that I read. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, so what, yes. is, what is the Asian book? I'm really curious, and I'm sure our audience is sort of curious about that background. It's called, it's called Metahaf Kadus. Okay, all right. Can you Met, say it? Metahaf Kadus. No, no, Metahaf. Metahaf? No, you can say it. Met, met. Met. Metahaf Kadus. Metahaf? Kadus. Kadus, okay, Metahaf Kadus. Yeah. And yeah. I actually, you know what? I was actually rude to my Ethiopian brothers and sisters and just Habisha as a whole watching. Mm -hmm. I didn't even say hello. Amasa Ginado, hello. Good morning to you yeah. all. So, okay. Metahaf. Kudus, right? Metahaf, Metahaf, Met. You Met, have to. Metahaf, Metahaf, Kudus. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. It means, awesome. It means, it means uh, uh, blessed, holy, holy book. Oh, the Bible. That's awesome. What I mean. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Okay, we'll come back to you. Let's get a little bit of, of uh, Leila's background, um, still on a personal, and then I want to bring you both to start talking about uh, your career background. So let's let's first uh, get a little bit of Leila's background as well. Uh, Leila, okay, so for everyone meeting you for the first time, let's talk about your personal background. I found it interesting in your bio, uh, your experience in terms of uh, being a performer. So tell us a little bit about that and your background as an, you know, coming from a family of entrepreneurs. Oh, um, of course, you know, me and you, we discuss about that uh, as far as, you know, uh, 
I start, you know, uh, working with the Ethiopian circus in Ethiopia. This is long time ago. And um, I was doing like gymnastic. I was involved in the circus, in the music, in dancing. Wow. Uh, I was doing like a, 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 like for the bigger artists, like in Ethiopia, I was doing dancing for them, like, you know, front stage. Wow. So I did a lot of things, like at the young age. And then also some of the movie, one of like top movie in Ethiopia back then, uh, I also participate on that in the movie uh, because uh, I was also, you know, uh, doing circus and the dancing part. So that was, got me. Okay. What was your role in the movie? Were you acting? Uh, I was acting. Yes. I wow. was acting. Yes. I was acting as a, a, a king daughter and I was doing like fighting. Uh, wow. Using my acrobats, you know, my dance skill to fight back. So, yes, I did that. So like you're a creative time. true and true. You were really <laughs> a creative true and true. So how did you get into that? When you did your interest in the whole entertainment industry to the point where you were even performing professionally on that kind of high scale, where did that come from? Um, I mean, pretty much, you know, the, of course, the Ethiopian background that I have definitely, uh, it, that gave me to open up, you know, door for me here in the state. And, um, uh, the reason why is I was actually running uh, a nightclub here. Uh, so the later, and I was just like, you know what? Uh, normally, I buy the shows from the different promoters. The later, no, 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 no. My question uh, is before before you even got into all of that. Just going back to your background, how did you even become a, a performer and, and on that oh, kind okay. of high level? That's that's a big deal. Yes. So I had a friend and we used to go to the same school and she was doing it. And she told me, he's like, hey, you know, why don't you, you know, why don't you do it? She's like, you know, you should try it, you know, come with me. And she took me with her. So uh, I did about one week training and then they were like, wow, you, you're good. So it's like, continue with it. And then that's how I end up, you know, uh, been full time, you know, been participate with circus and with the, the movie and stuff like that. Okay, and we're going to talk about this as we talk about the business of music in Ethiopia, but mm -hmm. I know that takes a lot of discipline, focus, and just a whole new level of really knowing yourself to perform at that high level. Can you yeah. just speak a little bit as to the kind of discipline and practice that went into being able to perform at that kind of high level and push your body the way you have? Yeah, I mean, definitely. It take about, I remember that, it take... Um, uh, we I used to go there like four days uh, per week, and then I have to probably drive. You know, let me take a, a, a transportation probably for like almost one hour. And wow. then I remember sometimes my dad he was like, "No, I'm not giving you any money." So I used to walk like one hour and a half by myself going back. So imagine three hours I used to spend because I really want to do it. So it got to the point my dad said, "You know, I'm not giving you no money because." This thing, I don't think you should just focus on school. It's like you go there. So still, I would get up early in the morning and I used to do it. Hour and a half, I used to walk. So, I mean, to be honest, it's just, it take a lot of focus, dedication. Uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, God, you have to pray about it. Anything you want to do first thing, you have to pray about it. And then put so much energy towards it. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. That is so interesting. Can you just speak a little bit about your background? I know you, your dad has very entrepreneurial minded, lots of businesses. And then he's seen his daughter saying, oh, I want to do performing arts and walk in three hours. So, yeah, he he wasn't. It's like he he didn't. To be honest, he didn't. He didn't because first he was like, OK, yeah, this is something you know nice. Then when he doesn't see me at home, then he would just like, you know what? No, 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 no. This is not going to happen. He's like, you don't need to do this because you should be focused on what I'm doing here. And I was like, no, I'm just going to do it my what I want to do. <laughs> then he's like, okay, where are you going to get the money? And then yeah. there was a fee. Or imagine there was a fee that I had to pay for. Yeah. And he still yeah. wasn't given to me. So I will find a way talking to my uncles, my cousins, you know, to, 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 do, to donate money for me to pay for that fee. So uh, because there's a fee each month that I had to pay. But later, because they saw me like, wow, you know, I was good. So they have no choice but to accept it without paying any money. So the the company actually took me as a full time. So I was actually making money out of it later. <laughs> so it, it, it was worth it. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. So we'll come back to you now and get into your pr professional background, both of you at the same time. But for now, let's get more into uh, Negus's personal background as well. 
So we'll be right back for you. All right, Nagus, welcome again. Thank you for joining us. And so let's we, we started to talk about your, your spiritual background because to me, spirituality is very, very important. Um, and I'm glad that you could, Yeah, and I'm glad absolutely, and I'm and I'm glad that you could share that uh, with the world as well. So, but let's get more into your background. Where were you born? Where you where where were you raised? Yeah, uh, fortunately, fortunately, I was born in a free land. Land never been occupied by any uh, uh, influence of uh, any philosophy of that's not ours, which is uh, Ethiopia, uh, where where real freedom fighters that kept the place free, uh, and and I was born in the heart of the capital of Ethiopia, which is Addis Ababa. Mm -hmm. uh, Addis Ababa means new flower. Mm. Uh, whenever I tell you I'm from Addis Ababa, I try to be what I say I am, which is new flower, uh, shine, uh, like give joy. And uh, uh, it's a responsibility to be, to come from where I come from. It's, it's uh, like there is certain things I want to do, but I can't do it because where I come from, I'm on this age, don't do that kind of silly stuff. So uh, it's a privilege, you know, and uh, yeah, I'm from Addis Ababa, the home of African Union where every African leaders once a year meet. Uh, what they did with that meeting so far they have, I don't know, but I have a strong belief the next generation wants to start meeting like this. Uh, uh, you know, we we going to do something that that they haven't done. So, yeah, Addis Ababa, home of uh, African Union. Uh, I was born there and studied uh, school there uh, i went to uh i come from you know every ethiopian come from a streak mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, i look at my father like god uh, when i see my father i see god like because the culture you understand so come from a very strict family uh, and uh i get a chance to come to united states and then i come to united states now uh, my father, uh, I've, I'm very blessed to have uh, beautiful children, and, and uh, that's what we are so far. Okay, so let's talk about your passion for um, entertainment. Leila talked about how she just had a passion. A friend of hers in school said, you got to get into this, and next thing you know, she was, and they're having to explain that to her dad. For you, where did your passion for entertainment uh, and and just being in the entertainment industry start start from I, or come from? Yeah, I'm from I'm from a land of free, which is where practice everything, freedom. When you're free, you can create. When you're free, you can practice your maximum ability of, of whatever, right? So, uh, entertainment. I was always a lover of music, but the entertainment part come in because. I see a lot of abusation. People abuse. People mm. don't get. People don't get. Uh, yeah, talent get hide. Talent get buried because they don't, nobody want to do Kabaka Pyramid and how are there. Nobody want to do Capitan Show and how are there. So good art get thrown in the trash, and uh, you see some arts in the theater. So I said, you know, all. My people, you know, to to rise them up. So Nugus Entertainment, Nugus means king. So if you have good stuff, we present you as the king or queen you are. So as uh, far as it was in our order, it was in our passion. I, I must be honest. Uh, I went in there to to put the order in the order. Mm. And, and 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 I had a great and beautiful time doing that. I get to witness Stephen Marley's creativity. I get to witness Damon Marley's creativity, Joe Mercer Marley. I work with the finest uh, because the heart, it was pure. You understand? I, I didn't, I, didn't, I don't hustle music. So as a young I boy, did you, you always, so as a young boy, did you always know that you wanted to get into entertainment? Like how, what, how did that? As a young boy, I was, I was a footballer. Oh, okay. Yeah, I play better than Drogba, you know? Okay. Yeah, man. I'm like, and, and, uh, and were you wanting to play professionally? How did the yeah. music part come into play? 
no, no, I want to play professionally, but my father told me that uh, uh, a ball player are, have, don't have much to contribute to his country and his, <laughs> his family. So he says, son, stop being silly <laughs> and having silly ideas <laughs> and wake up, you know? So I said, okay, I just played it for passion. Again, I told you, I look at my father like God. Mm -hmm. And I, today I tell you, he's right. Like mm. that was not where even you're good at it. Some things, some things mm. you're good. It don't mean you're called for that, right? I see. So yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, footballer. I always thought I was gonna take Ethiopia to World Cup and, and win the oh. World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I'm taking I'm taking Ethiopia and the World Cup in a different way though. Yes, yeah. you're doing it. You're doing it with the music. Yeah, yeah. So I'm still serving. So yeah. I don't have no regrets, you see. That that's a that's a good transition to bring Leila back yeah. and get into it. So so yes, taking Ethiopia to the World Cup, and you've done a lot of that. But let's go first yeah. to let's go first to Leila and let's start to set the background and the backdrop for, for what we're gonna talk about and, and what our audience is watching or will watch when they when they hit that replay button. By the way, this is so significant because prior to inviting you guys, I did extensive research to try to find the business of music in Ethiopia, and I could barely find anything. You know, um, not even in Amharic, even though I don't read the language and stuff, but I know enough to look at the videos and the images to tell me what they're talking about, and I couldn't find anything. So this, I think, is significant for young uh, musicians from Ethiopia or just Habisha folks that are interested in pursuing this. And this is their first time hearing from their own, really about how they take this journey and then everybody else on the continent who wants to collaborate and do business with you guys. So let's start first with Leila. What would you say today is the modern sound for the Ethiopian music? You know, we, we're talking about, you know, Afro beats from the Nigerian area, South Africa, Afro house and all those other things. What would you say is the sound for um, Ethiopian music today, modern Ethiopian music? Uh, I mean, uh, honestly, um, Ethiopians have their own unique music, uh, their own culture uh, compared to other African, compared to Afrobeats, you know, um, which is skistas, you know, the, even some of the instrument that they use is, is some, some part of Africa has not been used. So Ethiopian music is different, it's unique. So uh, it's quite a quite challenge for uh, some of the Ethiopian artists to be out there because the majority of them, you know, uh, it's not like an Afrobeats, but I see a few artists currently that are going towards that, you know, towards to the Afrobeats way. Uh, uh, but, you know, one thing you have to understand that Ethiopians are very proud where they're from. Yes, yes. And they don't want to change <laughs> that. They don't want to change the culture. They don't want to change the music, the style, because they feel like, you know, the music itself is a different brand. So for them, to be recognized by other changing it the unique in the love of the music of ethiopia have changing it to afro beats they don't believe in that me personally mm -hmm. as well i don't think they should because of course uh, you know ethiopia have a different compared to you know we have different alphabets i don't know if you know that ethiopia yes. doesn't use you know we have there's so many things about ethiopia that that proud so changing it uh going to be a lot of you know maybe backlash if you are trying because it's it's not accepted yes you can have a collab like for instance by bringing another artist but they will tell you that why didn't you stick to our own why did you mm -hmm. change it because we have mm -hmm. so many different beautiful culture you mm -hmm. know and different tribe you know so definitely mm -hmm. uh, and instead of mixing all those and make one music out of it uh, that is what is you know Ethiop most Ethiopians that we, we would love to see and instead Very of you know, going to Afrobeat. Yeah, so 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 the sound is is eclectic, but very, very authentically uh Ethiopian and with no interest of of trying to make it any kind of fusion per se, just really stick strictly um staying there. What is that specific sound called? What is the name of the sound? I know uh, it's probably a lot of different genres within within the music category, but what's the main popular genre of music? So specific. it's like I to be honest, it's hard for me to explain because okay. uh okay, like you guys have Afrobeats and then yeah, we Western call Africa, it, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think we call it is maybe like um 
I don't even think there is a word to it. It's like the music means it's like zafan. So zafan. Uh, uh, like uh, they, they have a, you know how you say you have R and B. Yes, uh, yes. That's what what I'm pop, whatever. Okay, yeah, exactly. So yeah, yes. I mean, maybe to it, it's for me it's hard to explain. Okay, let let's go to Negus. Maybe Negus can explain. Yeah, Negus, can you? Yeah. There, so, so we have specific categories. Yeah. Like, so. Mm -hmm. First of all, right? Music. When you say music, uh, music is ancient. So ancient as Africa. Then when you say Africa, you know. So uh, we can practice like just like how Nigerians practice that. You know, are different. Are the, the different music here is what makes us. But Ethiopia, we have you know we have Bati, which Bati. is Bati is more like. Uh, 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 love, you know. Then you have Antwe. So we have we have seven different uh, kind of uh, uh, genre. So with, when you mix up those seven, is you get Afrobeat. Mm. We give birth to Afrobeat. Understand? It's just do you find the balance? It come, it come. The sound is there. Yeah. You know, like how the, you have a chemistry. Uh, uh, chemistry have a, a formula. Yeah. Yeah, one of the yeah. criticisms of Afrobeat uh, is that it's a Western, um, a Western identification because the African sound is so eclectic and gazillion sounds. Even in Nigeria, we have so many genres. We happen to have the Afrobeats, uh, Afrobeats as a popular sound, but that's not the entire sound. I mean, my personal favorite kind of music in, in Nigeria is Fuji music. And then there's so many Akpala and so many, many other genres and then different regions across I the state. I see Fuji play in New York. Okay, I yeah, see, uh, so, and then you beautiful. go to South Africa and they have their own and Ghana. And so I completely agree with you that ultimately it, we are creating sounds that are that are eclectic. Okay, so having said that, to the, the response then to, to the person listening for the first time and hearing about the Ethiopian region is that the sound is eclectic, but you may have about seven or more major genres and then you fuse it and create the Afrobeats as Negus was saying. So Negus, having said that, um, one of the things that uh, was important to me to have this is because Every time there's a dialogue going, and I said this when I put on the business of music in North Africa, right? That it always seems like we never hear about the Ethiopians in the mix, even though I know since I follow Ethiopian music, right, that there's a lot going on there. So why why is that? Is it is it to Leila's point that uh, Ethiopians are proud don't want to change their their sound? Is that why we cannot, as a as an entire continent, seem to you know, like enjoy each other's sound. And then on the state side, we don't really hear that. Like what, what's preventing um, the rest of the continent to from really hearing the Ethiopian sound and mixing with Ethiopia? What do you think we need to be doing differently, both on the Ethiopian side and the other side on communicating our songs and our different styles and, and interchanging with each other? Yeah, so I'll say two things. Uh, this is my, mm -hmm. this might not be the, uh, uh, problem but what i see the two things is if you, if i show you my text message uh i have a text i have a text to david with uh uh one artist from ethiopia nati man you know nati man i don't know Mike. yeah yeah uh, uh, like i have right now as we speak jomar samarli and rahel Giltu, they are mixing up a song you understand me? As we speak, there is something in, 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 in the oven between mm -hmm. Teddy Afro and Stephen Marley, Calabo. That's amazing. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, there is no one was uh, breaking that. Uh, the barrier. Big, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, everybody was. Mm -hmm. And one, two, most African, when you see African event, uh, you don't see most Nigerian promoter booking Ethiopian artists. Mm -hmm. You don't. Mm -hmm. You don't. Why? Because people hustling music. People not serving music. 95% mm. of the people you see around music, they hustle music. Mm. So until the, the, the servant of music outnumber the hustler of music, music, African music would not reach the level, the potential level that 
guardingly, like without effort, she reach. So yeah. we just gotta, yeah, we just gotta uh, uh, serve. The moment we start serving Africa, Afrobeat is popular because it serves the Westerns. Hmm. Interesting. I know that I do hear the same criticism on the flip side. And so it's exactly what Leila said, that, that Ethiopians can be closed off and not inviting other diverse artists. I know you two are very different because you, you, you all sort of break all stereotypes and invite all kinds of artists and help all kinds of artists. But the collective... Yeah, and, hey, and just, and I just, can't wait to she write a book. And and just so you I mean, both, I'm a buy it. I don't even want her to send me the copy. The day she write a book, I'm a buy it and I'll, I'll give it to my daughter to read it. And, after just I read so, it. and just so you both know, I'm not a novice to the culture. My best friend in college was Eritrean. And independent of that, I've been very steeped in your culture for over two decades. So when Leila is talking about, and I've gone to some of your events and things like that, and I don't ever see, I'm usually the only, you know, the only West African for the most part in a lot of these events. And even then most people think I'm Somali or East African. So they don't even think I'm, I'm West African, but uh, Leila, let's come back to you since you raised that point already about Ethiopians being proud. Can you, do you think, or can you expand more on that, uh, on why we're not seeing that intercultural exchange between artists? Um, you're booking a lot of our West African artists for shows local in the US, nationwide and uh, global tours. What's, why aren't we seeing that much booking even on your end of fellow Ethiopian artists that we can be introduced to? Okay. Uh, I think I'm gonna start about pride. It's about pride and you know pride can kill you with a different way and some might be benefit them from whatever reason uh, a lot of times when you are trying to work with the ethiopian artists to do a collab deal a lot of them rejected mm. they don't want that uh most of them one thing about also that you know ethiopians artists they sing songs about the culture about the country uh, a lot of them, like, honestly speaking, uh, Ethiopians, when it comes to our country, you see a lot of love. Like, people are seeing uh, there's a pride. We're too proud about our own country. We're protective when it comes to our, our country. We see that. So we don't want to change the culture, which is I totally respect that. But uh, I wish, like, I can help. You know, I went to a lot of several artists, Ethiopian artists, I went to and say, hey, you know what? Uh, I want you to do a song with this artist. I mean, we're talking about Ailey's artist in, mm -hmm. in Africa. I mean, I don't have to say names, but you already know what I'm talking about. Ailey's artist, mm -hmm. willing to work. Like, hey, Leila, link me up. I want to work. But they don't want to work. So at this point, if you, they don't want to work, what do you do? You can't push them because you have to respect what they wish. If they think that, you know, to me, music is about love, music about peace. You can sing about a lot of things. You can create about unity. You can sing about so many things. But, you know, apparently, if some people don't want that, then you just leave it alone. Mm. Uh, and you give it opportunity to another one that wants it. But there is some, not everybody, but there is a few I actually link up with, you know, to, uh, you know, to be involved, like something like One Africa, you know. Mm -hmm. I remember I spoke to Polo, Mr. Polo, One Africa owner. Or, uh, uh, and Paulo also the founder. Cole, yeah, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, I reach out to a couple of Ethiopian artists to to link them up with you know working with artists. Some accept, but majority they don't want to do that because mm -hmm. they will tell you we, we we make music for Ethiopians, and uh, we cannot change that. And they don't see the value. Like for instance, mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. one specific artist with with alias artists from Nigeria having a song, they don't see the benefit of it. Interesting. Hopefully, they can change because. To me, you see Beyonce just did a song with Shatawale, Tiwa mm -hmm. Savage, with Whiskey. You know, it's not about right. It's just that this is going to help us, the world, to know. Because you can actually promote your culture without changing the lyrics, Absolutely. without changing the music. Yeah. So then if they don't want to do that, you know, I can only do so much. You know, uh, you know, maybe if I have to help other, 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 other artists, upcoming artists in Liberia. Because currently, actually, I'm focusing on that. I'm focusing mm -hmm. on helping Liberian artists. Other regions. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I'm, mm -hmm. Honestly speaking, actually, I'm currently helping a lot of Liberian artists mm -hmm. doing a collab deal, uh, you know, different things with, with the West African. 
especially Nigerian artists, willing to work. Mm -hmm. Include okay. Tanzanian artists. A lot of Africans are willing to work with the different artists. And mm -hmm. I would love to see that inside in Ethiopia, working, mm -hmm. you know, let's work together as, you know, yes, I totally understand, but you don't have to change your lyrics. You don't have to change, you know, your, your way of your saying. You you can still, you know, uh, another thing about Ethiopian artists, the difference, okay? They don't sing about anything inappropriate. I know in, in Afrobeats, you see that people singing about different things, but if you're most Ethiopian artists sing about their culture, their part, their parents, or the love the values societal huh? values the yes. their values the yeah. values yeah. they yeah. promote the culture that's what okay. you see maybe i think the reason why they don't do it is because uh they don't do it because uh they don't want to mix to that kind of culture yes yes because yeah. it's yeah. not accepted in our cult in our culture yeah to be yeah. Like. yeah yeah so okay so let, we have some comments coming in so let's get the comments going first and then uh, Negus, I want to pick up and we start talking structurally about because you are right there in the business of, of music on the ground. And so I want to talk about some of the more business issues that that come up. Um, so let's start first. Uh, this is uh, we have here. Oh, that's great. She and and uh, you're nowhere to be found online, not even LinkedIn. OK, is that is that you and sign us some of the uh, challenges that are most present in the Ethiopian music industry as a whole? Yeah, uh, I say Ethiopian industry don't have a challenge. Mm. Okay. What do you mean because by that? It's, it's, uh, you remember, it's not in the broad. It's still saying I'm doing my thing. I'm, I don't, so still left alone. Uh, there is no Shazam. There is no Sony Rucker. Mm. There is no one, uh, the circle is still the same, you know. So, uh, as Ethiopian, in, in Ethiopia, the, the problem I'll say right now in Ethiopia, the problem is the, how the world have to understand. Uh, if a singer talk about, like, example, certain lyrics in, in Afrobeat are okay, we dance with it. Those, the same, those the same lyrics, when you translate it to an Ethiopian musician view and give it to yeah. him. He put it, he put it in the work. The <laughs> artist is done. You yeah. understand what I mean? So yeah. The, the, the Ethiopian music have his own uh, flow. Okay. Uh, Ethiopian, you, you have to come to Ethiopian music flow with the flow. Yeah. You can invite Ethiopian music to uh, other place. And you, you follow me? So, yeah, so like when, when Stephen Marley, when Stephen Marley decided to work with Teddy Afro, you see, it's you just if you if you study Stephen Marley, and you study Teddy Afro, you understand why you understand. So, uh, but and as as Ethiopian music, just Ethiopian music is very limited. It's not like uh, we have a very limited artist. They are doing good. Uh, it's not too complicated uh, because, again, it's, it's it's a very untouched business, darling. Like so, so, so let me take it from a standpoint of being Ethiopian American. I'm watching this okay. right now, or British Ethiopian, or Ethiopian living outside of Ethiopia, and I want to connect with my roots, and I want to get back into the country, and I want to get into music because I do music, etc. I remember my really good friend again in college. His his brother actually, one of his brothers was a popular singer. I forget his first name, his brother's first name, but I uh, was a popular singer on the um, in Ethiopia, right? Okay. Um, but if I'm an, uh, someone trying to get in of Ethiopian heritage, how would you tell me to be able to break into the industry? What are the record labels? What do I need to do? Do I need to be putting records out? You know, what's the process? I, I yeah, the process is again, uh, self-made. In the 80% of Ethiopian artists, you see they are self-promote, self-made. Okay. Because there is no identity. There is no Sony record. Mm -hmm. You know, you got three, four record levels and you have, Ten, five, whatever uh, writers. Uh, it's easy to break in because, again, uh, like we have a singer, right? He 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 had released an, a song two years ago, and the song can't play. Nobody know to go away. 
because you remember we have uh, we lack in a lot of things unless you have a cd mm -hmm. like not not a lot of people have the internet access can uh spotify uh, uh yeah i all those features that you have somewhere else you don't have so the, the singer had a song he released it two years ago nobody know like two months ago little kid just playing that song that released two years ago mm -hmm. and make the song go viral mm. you see two years later so yeah. little kid was just done so there is no platform can help you to go viral mm. A distribution platform so you don't have the streaming ones like the spotify's and the no no, no. That. that's why we have to unite that's why we mm -hmm. have to come to a sense and at least be able to own that like yeah. africa african art need to be owned by africa yeah if you notice a lot of things belong to africa owned by then africa mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. that we have to come into at least in this music business so uh, let's uh, talk about Teddy Afro then. I'm then let, let me zoom in because everybody globally, at least if you're a music head, you've you've heard of Teddy Afro, yeah. uh, whether you're Ethiopian or not. So you've been able to work with him. He's my uh, big brother. That's great. You've been able to work with him even on a production, and uh, he shows pack you producing shows for him to get even almost 180,000 or a little over 180,000 people in a stadium for him. So how have you been able to manage that career to get it to that kind of high level? With him? Mm -hmm. With him, it's more, uh, 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 you know, you have to call gold, gold, and you have to call silver, silver. With him, it's more like reward of my heart. Uh, I, God saw my attention to music. Uh, God saw my, my, what my goal, my plan to music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a blessing, but after a blessing, what I did, I nurtured it, you understand? So uh, later we become soul brothers. So it was, it's a mission. With Teddy, it's not business. Teddy, it's, it's an order, it's a mission that we are fulfilling. But I have artists that I'm currently working with. Uh, uh, goodwill, in Ethiopia, everything is a goodwill. Mm. In Ethiopia, if you have goodwill, you can live to your, you know, so uh, you live goodwill. It's, a, it's an ancient way of doing business. Mm -hmm. You understand? So uh, the fact that I work with uh, uh, the one I worked with before, it opened the door to the one I'm working with in the future. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's, that's how the business is in Ethiopia. Because, again, but we can definitely uh, do something from today. It could be the first day. And one year from today, you and me and Leila, mm -hmm. even three of us can achieve yeah. something, you know, nice for Africa and the music part. Yeah. So before I, uh, I bring Leila back uh, to join us in the conversation, um, I'm curious about your merchandising. I thought that was really interesting what you've done also with merch, because when you look yeah. at the rest of Africa, most of the rest of Africa are not very good with merchandising. A lot of our artists are putting great music out there. They're getting recognized globally, but really beyond the music, and we saw post COVID, they don't really have something else that they can they can rely on as a stream of income, which is a problem and was a problem for a lot of artists during COVID. So you've been able to have not only a manufacturing company, um, manufacturing um, t-shirts, highly salicy image rights that you have, how did that come about and how have you been able to build out uh, such a, a strong merchandising uh, program? Yeah, it started out like 12 years ago. Uh, I want to, I want, I don't want my son only see me wearing Gucci and Versace. I don't, you know, I have a son now and, and this boy is a one year old and he started watching. So I don't want my son to see me only advertising uh, uh, things I learned. I want my son to see me endorsing advertising things I am, or the, who I am, as well as what I learn. I have no problem advertising what I learn, but you have to advertise who you are and what mm -hmm. you are as well. So I started with that, and uh, it was nowhere to find an image of uh, you know uh, great mains that come before us. 
Uh, and uh, I start with that. Ayla Selassie, of course, uh, you know, founder of African Union. Uh, 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 Ayla Selassie trained Mandela. Mm -hmm. So if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you respect the freedom of, of South Africa, you respect Ayla Selassie. Okay. Uh, you know, Ayla Selassie freed uh, many African countries from uh, European operation. So there was nowhere, there was no mole, there was nothing, nowhere I could go by the particular, you know, Ayla Selassie's stuff. So I, I got in that, I licensed myself. And today, uh, over 20,000 Ayla Selassie t-shirts has been worldwide, been moved the last 12 years. Uh, that is awesome. Get, get to work with Chronix. Yeah, I don't know if you know Chronix. Uh, yeah, is, the brand. Okay, Chronix is a, is a top uh, reggae singer in, in mm -hmm. Jamaica right now. I work Chronix, work with Barry Salmon, uh, endorsement from Stephen. Oh, this is, I'm talking about my, my, my printing. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, when I see the Jamaica, the reggae community really endorse it and uh, start making saints, then I took it to Africa and I start working with my brother. Uh, like example, if you see this, it said, Gurra Bicha, you know, uh, it's, it's one of Teddy's, it's one of Teddy's coat. So I did the whole Ethiopia album. And when the album come, we did, we did a t-shirt with the album. And uh, it was, it was fruitful, you know, it, it's still fruitful. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, uh, uh, but, Layla, to this. Oh, Layla, we can't see your face, but go ahead. Um. Go yeah, ahead. By, by, by the way, if you know anybody that's uh, into this, that need a, a merchant, uh, I'm I'm willing to work with them. Okay. You know, I'll yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll give them a proper. I could be the manufacturer for their individual. That's good uh, to know. That's good yeah. to know. And I'm and sure our audience watching also. Afterwards. I'm sure our audience watching also, you know, have notice of that. Layla, uh, we don't see your face, but we do have questions for you. I don't know what happened to your camera, Layla. Okay, it seems like we lost Layla there. All right, so so let's let's start talking about then um, all the different festivals that you have. Um, Thank you. I've had your destination festivals, and you even have another one coming up in September. What goes? Because you are invited, on me. Thank you so I'll, much. Please, Thank I want you. you. I want you to do so, do some kind of hosting like this from there. Sure, my yeah. pleasure. We'll talk yeah. about it some more. But cool. um, what? Uh, let Let's get into it um, because destination um, music festivals can be so tough, right? Yeah. And especially post COVID, how all of those destination festivals were canceled yeah. and people had to return money and it was all one canceled. Yeah, exactly. So. Tell me or tell our audience a little bit more about producing such events in such magnitude. And we have Layla. Layla is being com coming back. We'll add her to the stream pretty soon. Actually, before you do, I'll come back and address that. Let me get Layla in and have just a little discussion with her. But I please hold uh, on that thought, Negus, and we'll come back. So, so Layla, yes. What is interesting for me is just to explore just a little bit more on that music business value chain because. If I'm Ethiopian American or just Habisha period, and I mm -hmm. want to tap into that market mm -hmm. and I want to connect to, to my roots because a lot of Africans are reconnecting with their roots. Some are moving back to the continent. That's just mm -hmm. an awakening that's happening, mm -hmm. especially with the entertainment culture. Mm -hmm. um, Negus was explaining how very close stuff the industry is. You've said the same thing, but are there, what, what hope is there for me if, if I want that option? Or do I need to just start stateside first or start you know, in, in Europe first before going back to, to Ethiopia to try to break in as an artist? What, what would be my pathway? So what you're saying is like you as Ethiopian American? Yes, Ethiopian, yes. Ethiopian American or you know, British Ethiopian or any other region. Yes. I'm not in but, Ethiopia. I, I was born there or maybe I was born over here, but then I want to I want to connect with my culture and expose the culture in a different way. What do I need to do? OK, definitely. You have to go back. You have to do several things, just like, you know, the West Africans are what they do. Media tour. You have to have a PR, you know, things like that because you're not from there. So you're going to have to do some work, uh, I, you know, uh, to make sure that, you know, you have a right team, a right management. Uh, that supports your dreams to break into the Ethiopian market in Ethiopia. Now, 
two things. One, you have to stick to the culture, of course, uh, you know, definitely, because let's say you put a video out, an appropriate video to be, yeah. of course, then more likely you're not going to get support because you, they, there's a few people going to support you, but they feel like as Ethiopian, that's not who we are. So we don't want you to promote Ethiopian culture as that way because to Ethiopians, it's not acceptable. So you can do your normal style or you know, different things by putting creative from the north part of Ethiopia to south part of Ethiopia, from south, you know, from the north, by putting all those cultures together, if you can bring something to the table, of course they will accept you. But if you go on something that is not our culture, it's gonna be very quite challenging for that person to break into this system. Wow, that is so interesting. Um, well, there's something to be said too for respecting the place you go into. I mean, ultimately, if you're creating music, you wanna impact the world and change the world, hopefully. And in doing that, you've got to listen many times to what your audience is saying they want. Because sometimes I think artists uh, can create, or just creatives as a whole, we create and then we're like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm creating, deal with it. But if you want people to roll with you, then you've got to be responsive to what your audience is specifically asking for. Let's, let's transition a little bit to the booking agent side of things, right? Okay, so I may not be signed to a record label, I may not have a manager, but I know you, Leila, and I want to get a job and get paid because I know that's what you do. So um, explain the process of what you look for, even if it's a supporting act to a major art, uh, act. If you have Shata Wale, for example, that you worked with, Davido, for example, that you've worked with, and if I'm an artist who wants to be able to have that opportunity, especially from, from the region, um, to be a supporting act, what would you look for in booking me? So as Ethiopian artists or as yes, as Ethiopian, Ethiopian artists. Other artists, 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 artists are enjoying and it's still the same process. Yes. So that's why I just want you to speak to Ethiopian artists because we never see two. I can't name now, beyond Teddy Afro, I can't really name some of the jumping, amazing uh, Ethiopian artists. It's been a while I've really, really followed fully the Ethiopian music scene, mm -hmm. but I can't really name that many. And I think that that's a disservice to a lot of the, um, you know, creatives that are that are in that space that want an opportunity to be heard. So I'm curious uh, on the booking side of things. So you see, um, when it comes to Ethiopian artists, like uh, your top five artists, mm -hmm. if somebody asks me who is Ethiopian, Top, yes. top five artists from one to five. If you ask me, I would tell you Teddy Afro. There's no competition. Oh, wow. In fact, we can even go one to 10. Mm -hmm. And that's the bad part. The reason why is um, uh, too many things in Ethiopia as far as the industry. You know, mm -hmm. there is no record label, number one. They they don't believe in that. Artists would sign a five deals, a 10 years deal, like some of the artists that you see in West, they are doing. You don't see that. It's not knowing. When Ethiopian artists make music, they make music, they sell CDs, and that is it. Mm. A lot of them doesn't know the benefit of, you know, YouTube and other platforms. You know, Apple, like, there is a few artists. I went to Apple to see who are the Ethiopian artists that's on Apple, like, to download. Yeah. Few. And it shouldn't be like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because uh, Ethiopia has about 120 million people. We are, like, the biggest after Nigeria when it comes to Yes, Africa. yes. Even so, here, twenty nine percent of the population uh, in terms of immigrant groups, right after Nigeria, Nigeria is about thirty nine percent. Ethiopians about twenty eight, twenty nine. Yeah. Yeah. So, how do we change that? You know, uh, there is some things can be done. It depends what the artist wants. Now, if you want to be popular in Ethiopia, you're just gonna stay in Ethiopia. Now, if you want to create a different music. This, you can you don't have to change your culture by just mm -hmm. putting the south <clears throat> excuse me the south part of Ethiopia and the north part of Ethiopia and of course the, you know the west and the east by putting together you can still can create the music and people can understand take a look Diamond Platinum he's speaking Swahili right to be honest like Tanzanians are only 35 million people but look where he went to with his music the guy have more view than any African artist currently, except Mohammed Ramadan. He's from Egypt. But the reason why you see all this is because he didn't think, he didn't make music only for Tanzanians. He made music for everyone. Yeah. So it depends the artist's interest because some things you can't force, like I said before. So if you want to just make music just for Ethiopians, you're going to sit right where you are. And 
you can just please whatever you want to. But if you want to change the music, you can still be Ethiopian. You can still sing your song in Amharic, in Oromo, in Tigrinya, Walaita. You can use different platform. You can still change, include the dance part. We have Ethiopians have so many dance, so yeah. many, you know, movements, so many things our own. It make us unique and different. So artists can use that and use it to spread his culture, to show, you know, to promote his own country. He can still do that. But it's just that the mindset has to change. The mindset. Okay. So if I so going back to the question on booking, how would you go about what are you looking for if you wanted to book an artist to perform as a supporting act here in the US? Let's say you have a David Doe or Shatawale. What what would you be looking for for the uh, emerging artist? One, when mm -hmm. I book Ethiopian artist to mm -hmm. a different something like in one Africa or something like that, I will look to artist's interest. I will talk to one and one that I will be asking questions. Has Ethiopian, why, you know, what is your goals? What are you trying to achieve? And who is, what kind of audience are you looking for? There, is it something that you're planning to work with another artist? Or are you a type of person that, oh, I'm only making music for Ethiopia. That's red flag for me. Because I want you, it's like, it's not like I want you to do it. I, it's like as an artist, artists belong to the world. You should be able to change, to voice out by, you know, by, by your own music to promote your own country. You can do that. No one can take away that from you. But I would love to see Ethiopian artists working with a different artists so that, you know, we can put you on a stage. You can be able to do like bring in Grammy, you know, do different things. I would love to see that Ethiopian artists doing something like that. Yeah, absolutely. I even think about, uh, and uh, it looks like uh, Teddy for I mean, sorry, um, Negus lost him a bit. So hopefully his connection comes back, but, yeah. um, even Teddy Afer, I mean, uh, as iconic as he is in the Ethiopian music scene, we haven't seen him on that global scene like that. Yeah. And there's no reason why that shouldn't be for the kind of work he does, the recognition, the me global media recognition. Mm -hmm. But still, there's so many regions that are not really aware of his music and what it carries because mm -hmm. there's that sort of lost in translation of bridging the gap. He should be nominated for for Grammys and win Grammys in light of not only the body of work but his followership. Exactly. But that 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 is lacking and, and that sort of goes to goes back to your point. Okay, so um I think what I want to do now is start coming um and as I get ready to wrap it up, hopefully Negus will be back with us to talk about the production side because I'm very interested in production. But what I wanted to do is touch on a little bit of that post production, I mean production, but post COVID situation, right? So how has the industry been for you so far with respect to booking shows? I mean, everything came to a standstill. Have you been coping and what does it look like now uh, as we the world is starting to open up again? Yes, so uh, during COVID, of course, we couldn't do a lot of work, you know, uh, because nowhere is open. So uh, I reached out to a lot of artists, some of the artists I've never worked with before. I reached out to see, uh, I have a festival is coming up next year, and um, for uh, it's it's gonna be four different places. Mm. So I was working on that project. One also uh, in uh, in Kenya, uh, another one here in Europe, and also. Okay. In, so I was working on those projects uh, and also creating collab deal. I was connecting a lot of artists that I was working with and some that I didn't work with. So I can be ready for tour for the U.S. tour. Mm -hmm. uh, some already have a plan already to do U.S. tour. Some are like Shata Wale currently. He is, you know, the biggest Afro uh, reggae artist in Africa. So currently we are doing the, like video shoots, a PR. So it helps me actually. The COVID actually helped me to organize more to create my own team. Before I was only focusing on uh, doing a tour. But now I have the entire full PR uh, and the uh, management, uh, I have my own team in Kenya and South Africa. Oh, that's amazing. So it's pretty much, it helped me. And then guess what? All women, <laughs> that make it a difference. That I is fantastic. Women, yes, I have all women people that I work with me. So this is definitely, is going to be an amazing year, 2021. Awesome, awesome. And good timing and the girls to come back into the stream and let's, start to wrap it up, right? And, and Negus, I'm so interested. Nela was talking about she's got four festivals coming up. 
Layla, if you're listening and you don't understand what Layla is saying, Shatawale just did one of the biggest tracks with the gift of the gift album for Beyonce, The Lion King, which was the uh, Already. That song is dope, mm -hmm. amazing song. Uh, Shatawale is from Ghana. Layla has been working with them extensively. And currently, if you go to uh, her uh, social network pages, um, Instagram, you will see that she already has a tour of some sorts going on with him and having all kinds of requests worldwide that she handles. So get plugged in, especially if you're an artist, quality work that you should be doing and hitting up your booking agents. I always say in the music industry, even if you don't have a manager or lawyers, these are the two people you need. You need your booking agent and you need your promoters or event producers because they're the ones hiring you directly and giving you the jobs and paying you directly. So never like follow the money, I always say. If you follow the money, it takes you to those two key people uh, within the industry, any industry you go to, always look for your booking agents and always they get you the jobs and always look for your promoters and and, uh, and event producers because they get you jobs too and they get you paid uh, before you start dealing with all the other aspects of monetization of your IP, your lawyers, your managers, etc. So uh, it's a good way to transition that goes to talk about that production side and then I'll bring each one of you back to, to wrap up on the final words you want to say. Um, Layla will come back to you on those final words in a minute, but the ghost production, you have a bunch of festivals coming up. Um, and I'm curious about what it takes to have all of these different events in different African countries and the Caribbean, the way you've been putting them and putting them on so successfully. Yeah. Well, for, first, uh, uh, faith, you know, you have to have faith in yourself. Once you believe in yourself, uh, success is not given up. Most people, they think they go outside and the, potato, the, the, the farmer put corn and the next morning he go grow. No, the farmer consistently go there, to nurture the land and X and Y, Z. So, so yeah, man. So not, not, I don't know. Uh, I don't know failure. They don't exist. Failure don't mm -hmm. exist in my my real world. Uh, I might have signal failure, blase blaza, but my me, there is no failure. So uh, where I, I ha things happen to me that the other person will never look back that way again. Before and I was right there to do it again. You understand? Because I learned, I learned from yesterday's uh, uh, error. So. Royal Fest, such as like good example, Royal Fest, the name of it alone. The name of it alone is a Royal Fest. So Royal Fest, it was a five day away, a getaway in Jamaica, April 21st to April 20, uh, 26th. Why April 21st? That's the day Haile Selassie landed in Jamaica. 1964, April 21st, Haile Selassie's touchdown in Jamaica. So we follow the footsteps of the last African king. And, uh, you know, and uh, we go there. So we have, uh, we create diverse, you see now Ethiopian artists, Jamaican artists was going to shake hand, give each other the same mic. You see? Uh, so the, 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 the curse has been broken. The bridge has been built. Uh, uh, because by someone not giving up or someone not looking for the prophet to be only people. Sometimes the prophet could be a human. Sometimes the prophet could be joy, like happiness within yourself. So when you do this kind of event in the name of Africa or to better African art, you have to be, first of all, you have to be a person that don't fail. Mm. Uh, because everybody push you, you see? Every single one you're walking to, most of them push you. You have to be a ball. You know, like when you push a ball, the ball fell. But it bounce, bounce back, back higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It don't, it don't uh, broke down there like egg, see? So you have feel spiritual shit. Uh, I work with Charlie, Steve, uh, uh, Sami Dan, uh, uh, you know, we have we have the lots of Pharaoh. We have a lot of talent in it. Uh, 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 DJ Arcor, Davidos DJ, Ace, uh, cool he's in it too. You see, like if you see my lineup in the Royal Fest, I have a Nigerian DJ. That is awesome. That is awesome. That's awesome. It's in, like, and, and, and this, if you are not 
If you are not serving the art, you don't put your money in this kind of place. Yeah. Most yeah, yeah. people put this kind of money in the stock market, you see? So are you willing to put your money in Africa? Are you willing to put your wisdom, your time for Africa? Then Africa will pay you. Africa will pay you maybe by your children. I don't have to reap the, the benefit. The reason right now, Royal First COVID cancel it. I have no government support. You see, I have no reverse. I have nothing turned back to me. And most of the time people hide when that happened. No, I'm doing New Year Eve in Dominican Republic. Mm. Because, because, you know, you have to, everything happened for a reason, right? So you you cannot quit on your people. You you can't quit what you start. Yeah. So it, it's not it's not easy, but it make it easy when when God keep putting people like you in my life. Like you understand, like He 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 prepare every every answer. So you are like gonna be the most success. You gonna be the most success to my story. Amen to that. Amen to so, that. You know, I can't, I can't fear nothing. Man. You know? So, 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 um, final words that you have for the people and where they can reach you, especially artists or their managers and, yeah. or labels, people that want to work with you from the U S everywhere. Uh, final words, actually, you know what? I'm going to cheat before that final word. I was asking, uh, Layla before we, when we lost you, I said, someone like Teddy Afro is so big. And his work on such a global scale that there's no reason why he's not being nominated for the Grammys and he's not like mm -hmm. everywhere. So one of the things I hope from this conversation, it's a start. My door is always open. Bring as many Ethiopian artists, please, to come through uh, so we can introduce them to the world. We were talking um, but but I, would, I would love to see uh, a more push, you know, um, and link up, arm link up with the rest of the continent to get Teddy Afro, for example, out uh, on the Western part as well. I've been following Teddy Afro he's for out. over, over 15 years. No, over 20 years, since since yeah, college. He's, since college. He's in the, Western, the Western know him. He's out. But you yeah. have to remember, Grammy's rip. We have to be honest, right? So you have to remember, Grammy's is, 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 is like a, they made Grammy. They don't, they, they, they hustle Grammy. See? If... So what's Grammy missing? Teddy's not missing Grammy. That's true. Grammy missing Teddy. That's true. Because we, we don't, I mean, as Africans making great music, we don't West, necessarily need the validation of the West. But I'm talking more about the exposure where other Africans get to really, really know uh, the sound, um, especially the younger generations too that are coming, getting the more of the word out about yeah, what he does. Uh, I'll say this respectfully, right? Mm -hmm. The biggest, the biggest, Band in Africa, the mm -hmm. Sabo Gida Band. Mm -hmm. Which is Teddy Afro's band, of course. Teddy Afro Band is the realest and the biggest band in Africa, period. If anyone can talently challenge that, like that will be a show, that will be a music show, right? But I doubt if, if anyone can come for it. So now the Grammy know that, they know that, they, they Every platform no Teddy Afro. But you remember, it's, it's man-made. So man -made, yeah. We, yeah, we have to follow, like, we have to follow. Now, the collaboration uh, with Stephen Marley, mm -hmm. which is, I think, will be ready for a Royal Fest 2022. Uh, that will put uh, certain numbers. It will draw some numbers. But Teddy yeah. was number one in 40 weeks in mm. international uh, chart. Okay, chart. Okay. Wow. So if you that's seen this guy for four weeks, uh, number one album in international chart, you don't give him nothing. I yeah. say you missing out. You understand yeah. what I mean? Absolutely. Because Absolutely. He have work. Teddy have, uh, as we speak, he have like two album finish. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I heard both of them. And I'm saying yeah. this publicly. It's outside of this world. It's, it's the world is not ready. You see. Yeah. So, the, the, Grammy missing Teddy. Grammy need full real african performance mm -hmm. how can they get that they book teddy afro they acknowledge teddy afro they give teddy afro acknowledgement and they will sit down and watch real music ancient music mm -hmm. ancient mm -hmm. instruments 
Mm-hmm. No, but I, I will Very interesting. That, you know? yeah. All right. So final words, how, how can the people reach you, all those different industry stakeholders that want to work with you or just artists directly who are also industry stakeholders that want to work with you and they want to come to Ethiopia, they want to go to your royal festivals, they want to go to Jamaica and, and perform open for you or whatever the case may be. How can they reach you? Uh, they can reach me, uh, uh, Negus Way, is N-E-G-U-S underscore Way does IG, or you can email me on negusway at gmail.com. Okay, you don't mind uh, with, with your email. I wasn't expecting your email, but you don't mind clearly. People can reach you for your, yeah. No, your, no, I, that's the, I don't mind on anything because uh, uh, they can, or they can reach me through you, they can reach me through Leila. That anyone they see me stand with are my best representative because they've, they've been, once you spend five minutes with me, you're being, you feel the love. You feel yeah, the harmony definitely. I have for you. Definitely. You know that I have nothing but love for you. So Absolutely. who don't want to support love, you see? So yeah. and, and, and uh, if you want to do anything in Africa, especially Ethiopia, I'm the way. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, nobody Absolutely. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I do hear the call coming through. But uh, final words, if you want to reach uh, Negus, um, definitely reach out to, on IG, Negus underscore way, and DM him directly, or you already heard his uh, email information too that you can um, get to him. Negus, thank you so much for appearing on the show. I know your spirituality is super important to you. A church was today, a ceremonial uh, thing going on culturally, but you, you, or oh, religiously for you, but you made the time and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Please stay in the green room. Wait in the green room. Don't go anywhere so we can chat briefly, please. Okay. I'm going to put you in the green room. So thank you. All right, Layla. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, final words that you want to share with our audience and how they can reach you if they want to work directly with you. Okay, yes. Um, uh, like I said, I know earlier I was telling you about I have a couple of festivals that are coming up and all organized by all females. So wow. we, we're, we're going to have one in Ethiopia. The second one we're going to have in Nigeria, which is West meet East in Ethiopia, East meets West. So we're trying to coordinate. Nigerian artists bringing them to Ethiopia. Ethiopian artists, we're taking them to Nigeria. Nice. Uh, the, sec the third one is going to be in Miami. Okay. Uh, I'm also partnered that with Big A. I'm sure you know Big A is. Yes, yes, absolutely. Big A Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Big A Entertainment. And then mm -hmm. my fourth festival is going to be is in South Africa, which is we bring it all African artists together. You are so not playing, girl. Yeah, I have four projects that we currently are we working on. And definitely anyone who would love to work with me. I'm here to work with anybody else. It doesn't matter who you are. I'm always here. Uh, you, My email is leilaentertainment at gmail.com. Or you can uh, DM me on Instagram, konjo underscore Layla, L-E-Y-L-A. So konjo is K-O-N-J-O underscore Layla. So these are my two contacts. And uh, I'm always here. Thank you so much, Leila. Your contributions were absolutely amazing. And I love how you really broke down a lot of things. Thank you so much. Uh, please wait in the waiting room. I'll be right there with you. All right. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. My goal today was just to get an idea and explore what um, Ethiopian music is all about and, and, uh, and specifically the business of music in Ethiopia. I have a long standing relationship with the Ethiopian community as I do other diverse communities and the culture and the people and the language and the dance. I even dance pretty well, Ethiopian dance as well. But I wanted to take it beyond that and start talking about the artists and the creatives in that space and the industry professionals and how we can all link up and you know really, really talk about the business, follow the revenue, bring more income coming in to all creatives. And I'm happy that we had that conversation, uh, particularly for Ethiopian young artists that will watch this or just Habisha artists in general. I hope it adds value to you. You've heard the contacts of those two key people that are you know from your region, reach out, don't be shy to do that so we can hear more of your sounds. All right, everyone, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you on a weekend, on a Sunday. And um, generally the timing that I book this is because uh, in Nigeria already it's 4 p.m. In South Africa, it's 5 p.m. In East Africa, it's, it's uh, 6 p.m. 
And so the, coordinating that time to make sure my audience, which a large part of that are on the continent, um, I have to be 8 a.m. here in the U.S., uh, in California, and 11 a.m. on the East Coast to make sure I get my main demographic that watch the show and subscribe. All right, it's been real. We'll catch you next time. Have a good one until next Sunday, and I can't wait for next Sunday. It's, it's going to be a really good one. Cheers. Bye-bye.